Hello, good afternoon. My name is uh, Jörg Tevis. I'm the uh, CEO of Avagant. We're a company headquartered in Silicon Valley, uh, and we're working on uh, display technology. Um, uh, specifically, what I'm going to talk to you uh, today is our light field technology that we're bringing to the market as we speak. So before I do that, uh, I just want to uh, talk a little bit about the terms and terminologies that are being used uh, in the space. I mean, this is an AR show, so I assume that uh, everybody knows and understands what augmented reality is. But just to clarify our perspective, we're focusing on mixed reality. Mixed reality basically is augmented reality that adds interactivity uh, with uh, any object, with virtual objects, um, to the experience. So this term has been used by different players in the industry, I think in a slightly different uh, way, but from, from, our, from, uh, from our perspective, it's really important to focus on interactivity so that I can use my hands and my arms um, to interact with uh, virtual objects. So mixed reality will change the way and reinvent the life as we know it. There will be gazillions of different uh, applications uh, for mixed reality experiences. Um, actually, I'm, as I'm based in the US in Silicon Valley, there's a huge, um, uh, the, a huge movement in conversation right now about consumer and the impact of uh, mixed reality for the consumer business. Here in Germany, we have a lot of conversations with uh, more uh, enterprise industry players that are all looking at using and leveraging mixed reality for their respective use cases, be it in design engineering, be it in service repair and maintenance. So with mixed reality glasses, uh, we're going to experience the way and the life uh, around us in a completely different way. Think about consumer use cases, uh, one thing that we're showing here, real-time interaction with the real world integrated with e-commerce applications or service repair and maintenance application of highly complex technical problems. So we're currently uh, at the transition from the uh, mobile computing age towards the computing age. So over the past decades, we've gone through a transition from the early mainframe days to the age of the personal computer, uh, computing in the 80s and 90s. Uh, the 2000s uh, brought us mobile computing with the invention of the smartphone. Uh, at the same time, we've, saw, uh, we've seen dramatic increase in connectivity. The internet moved from the desktop uh, to the mobile device. And the next step that we're about to see is going to happen uh, in front of us right now. Uh, it is ambient computing, so I highly recommend you read uh, Walt Mossberg's last article that was published uh, about six months ago, uh, where he described ambient computing as um, the, the next wave of computing where all surrounding the cloud through uh, mobile uh, connectivity, through 5G, becomes basically the dominant platform. In order to make this happen, several things have to happen at the same time. Uh, computer vision is a field that's going to be very important. Uh, artificial intelligence, the way how uh, uh, systems, how computers uh, interpret the world. Uh, and most and, uh, important for a good mixed reality uh, solution is optics and display technology. And that's what we at Avagant are focused on. So the challenges for mixed reality mass adoptions right now uh, uh, there are a variety of uh, key challenges. Uh, processing power, battery life, ergonomics, uh, size of a de device. So before we uh, get to a form factor that is uh, close to regular glasses, it will take some time. We at Avagant are pushing and working on that. Uh, in the meantime, a key ingredient uh, for that is light field, and I'm going to explain a little bit more detail why this is actually necessary for uh, uh, mixed reality mass adoption. So what is light field? Um, I assume most of you have heard about it, but I just want to uh, frame the conversation and explain a little bit more uh, what this actually does and how this realizes market potential and solutions in the market. 
So um, a light field simultaneously displays images of multiple focal planes. So what we do is we basically mimic the way how we naturally see the world. This is very important. And I'm going to explain in a few, in a few examples why this matters and where these uh, technologies really will be applied. So why does light field matter? Uh, look at this uh, short video here. You see a hand and you see a mass robot on that hand. And what you notice is that either the hand is in focus and the robot is out of focus or vice versa. So this is a typical problem that you see in uh, uh, head-mounted displays these days. It's very difficult to get the object rendered at, at the right focal plane. So when I move my hand, for example, the object should follow the uh, uh, focus of the uh, hand, which is an object of the natural world. So we come to a problem that is well known in the uh, scientific community. It's called the, uh, the convergence accommodation problem. Uh, this problem plagues uh, VR industry, and it has become an even bigger issue uh, in the uh, augmented reality field. So what does that mean? There are two key uh, focal uh, uh, um, depth cues that our brain uses. Um, there's um, focus or accommodation. So when I look at an object uh, close, I focus on the object, and everything that's further out is blurred. And when I look at an object in the far, I focus on that, an object that is close is blurred. So this is basically the focus a depth cue. And then there's uh, convergence. Uh, what does that mean? So any object that I look at close, my eyes naturally converge to that object. And anything that's further out, my eyes become basically uh, parallel. And these two uh, stimulus for my brain have been developed. They work together. Um, uh, they work together in, uh, in in harmony. And my brain needs to uh, needs these two parameters to work well together. Um, what you see here on the right side uh, is uh, um, a display where the focus uh, uh, in an head-mounted display, where the focus is basically at the display, but the accommodation is far. This causes, uh, uh, for most people, uh, discomfort, headaches, um, motion sickness, nausea. So this chart basically explains that in the real world, where convergence and focus uh, work in, uh, in an ideal path, you see that chart in the middle. This is the real world. And then there is a so-called comfort zone. So this is basically where our brain uh, is comfortable with seeing uh, uh, objects uh, and, and these two parameters working together. So in the distance, there's a very large comfort zone, uh, but in, the, in a short distance, so anything between zero to one meter, there's a very little tolerance for error. So as we're building virtual systems, as we're creating uh, virtual objects, uh, we got to make sure that everything that's in near range, and remember our definition of mixed reality is to be able to grab objects, to interact with objects in the near range. So we got to make sure that um, everything is rendered at the right uh, distance. So this requires light field technology. So we have to be able to create different focal planes. So uh, virtual objects need to appear uh, real at dis distances both near and far. So this can be achieved by rendering objects uh, at the same time, basically, uh, uh, with different focal plane information. It's like we naturally see the world. So um, what we have is basically a new technology. We've developed this light field technology and are currently bringing this to market uh, with uh, key partners. And um, this allows us to create experiences, for example, that you can go up close to virtual objects. So a key use case, um, think about uh, uh, gaming or think about education use cases where you have objects. You can go up close to objects. Uh, you can look at objects from different angles. Um, so you're able to get up very close to objects. The other thing is the immersive depth of field. Um, so here you see an example where you have several virtual objects. The hand in the foreground matches the focal plane of the virtual mass robot that sits on it. Uh, so they're both either in focus or they're both out of focus. Okay, get that video playing. 
Um, our light field technology also allows us to create new types of uh, user interfaces. So here, for example, you see that you can actually touch uh, virtual buttons uh, in the screen in front of you. You can use your fingers and manipulate objects that are directly in front of you. So you no longer need um, to use um, uh, UX and UI elements where objects are pinned against the wall and where you use hands, for example, um, uh, that are recognized by camera. So you can directly interact and manipulate objects. Another key use case for light field is to be able to read text, text up close. So you see here in this example that there's a UX uh, uh, a user interface on the, uh, uh, on the near focus. And uh, the virtual telepresence, uh, telepresence use case is also uh, a, a, a very interesting because you can now actually get up close. I mean, this video doesn't really show that, but you can get up close to that person and uh, as if the person is in, uh, real in the room. So uh, what we're doing uh, at Avagant, we're providing the core display technology uh, to enable these uh, light field uh, experiences. So our technology basically sits in the middle of uh, different applications and verticals. So um, there's the enterprise market, there's the consumer market. Uh, in the consumer space, uh, a lot gets uh, a lot of uh, e-commerce use cases and entertainment use cases will become available uh, through um, uh, lifelike mixed reality experiences. On the enterprise side, um, there's a lot of interest uh, and excitement in the uh, healthcare space. So um, a lot of different applications there, be it med medical education, be it support in the OR room, where it is required that a, uh, for a realistic uh, visualization of, well, the human body and uh, different parts and organs of the body is being performed. Um, design and engineering, I said this before, uh, in the automotive industry, uh, a lot of uh, um, investment or a lot of effort is, uh, is, uh, is put into the uh, manufacturing process, the different design steps, uh, clay models are being built. Uh, so this is a very time consuming, very expensive process. And um, a good mixed reality solution basically overcomes this and provides the ability to uh, create um, models uh, and different flavors of models on the press uh, of a button. So it's a cost optimization and it makes uh, uh, several um, steps become unnecessary uh, in, in the workflow. Uh, communication uh, is one of the areas that receives a lot of attention. Uh, we're actually partnering with a very large consumer company right now um, to build a use case for virtual telepresence where um, uh, individuals um, uh, will basically be well, virtualized. And uh, that, again, requires the ability to have uh, the depth of field and being able to um, make people look as real as possible. And last but not least, uh, the whole education and training market uh, combined with uh, some of the service repair, maintenance uh, use cases also plays a very um, uh, important role. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, are there any questions?